Hi, everyone, and welcome uh, to the Appraiser Qualifications Board webinar summarizing the real property appraiser qualification criteria changes that were adopted on May 1st, 2018. With me today is the chair of the AQB, Mark Lewis. Howdy, y'all. <laughs> welcome. Um, as we mentioned at the AQB on, um, on February 1st, in Washington, D.C., at this public meeting, adopted changes to the criteria that become effective on May 1st. Today, we want to discuss those changes and provide some rationale as well as some implementation advice. Just as a background, the AQB minimum qualifications, uh, Title 11 of FIREA has, authorizes the AQB to set the minimum qualifications for trainee appraisers, licensed residential, certified residential, certified general, as well as supervisory appraisers. The AQB does this by establishing minimum qualifications for education, experience, and examination. With that, um, Mark, can you tell us a little bit about the implementation date for the new AQB changes? Sure. The uh, changes become effective uh, May the 1st, 2018. Uh, now, states can adopt these new requirements at any time, but they can't implement uh, the, the changes prior to that May 1st, 2018 uh, adoption date. However, it must be understood that some of the new requirements are less than that, uh, which is currently required under the 2015 criteria. So states may opt to implement all of the requirements, some of the requirements, or even none of the new requirements. Uh, we'll address this in greater detail later in the presentation and how this might impact uh, particularly reciprocity issues. Great. Well, along those lines, uh, some are concerned that these new requirements um, with with the lower criteria that you just referred to will mean that the appraisers are less qualified. How has the AQB addressed this concern? Well, uh, later in the PowerPoint, we're going to get into the whys of uh, why the AQB actually revised the experience requirement portion of the criteria. But the AQB wants to emphasize that our charge is to set minimum qualifications for appraisers. And we firmly believe that the net result of these changes will produce an appraiser equally qualified as one credentialed under the 2015 criteria or even prior versions of the criteria. It's crucial to understand the difference between qualified and competent. Uh, Consider even an appraisal completed early in an appraiser's career versus one from a seasoned appraiser with, say, 20 years of experience. Uh, USPAP addresses competency under the competency rule. The AQB uh, is charged with qualifications, not ensuring competence. Uh, so that is a distinction that we want to make clear. And Mark, that's we we heard that in some of the comment letters uh, from people saying things like, "Well, you know, an appraiser that doesn't have this amount of experience or doesn't have this level of education, they wouldn't be able to perform an assignment of this type or that type." And and what you're making clear here is that's not what the AQB's job is. The AQB's job is to make sure they're qualified, but the competency is something that comes thereafter. That's exactly correct, John. Great. Well, let's start talking about some of the actual changes that the AQB adopted. Um, first, can you talk about what changes were made to the college-level education for someone seeking a licensed residential credential? Sure. Uh, in regard to the licensed residential level, uh, the first thing, it must be clearly understood that we have not changed anything related to qualifying education. Uh, it is still required for the licensed residential level 
150 qualifying education hours of core appraisal education. Uh, however, under the May 1st, 2018 criteria, someone who is seeking a licensed residential uh, classification no longer has to complete any college level education. If you require in the 2015 criteria, the licensed residential appraiser was uh, required to acquire 30 semester hours of college level education with no regard to the subject matter of those hours. The AQB in the 2018 uh, criteria has opted to eliminate that requirement for the licensed residential credential level. So that's a that's again a really important distinction. There are some people that uh, we have heard say, well, the AQB reduced the education requirements, but uh, really the the education requirements that have been reduced were only from the college level education, not from the specific uh, appraisal level education. And and uh, I think the same thing applies to the certified residential credential. Mark, can you talk a little bit more about what? what changes were adopted for that level? Uh, you're correct in the, in the LR classification. In regard to CR, uh, substantial changes were made to the CR credential in the 2018 criteria. Uh, first again, as you stated, we want to emphasize that the qualifying education has not changed. It's still 200 hours for those wishing to be a certified residential appraiser. but Individuals seeking to become a, a certified residential appraiser after May 1, 2018, really have six options to satisfy the education beyond QE. Uh, the first option is uh, one we want to emphasize is that a bachelor's degree is preferred in, for anybody. We want to emphasize the importance of a bachelor's degree and we don't want to, to de-emphasize that, uh, that we think a bachelor's degree is important, and that is the first way you can qualify for the certified residential is to have a bachelor's degree in any field of study. But the second option is, is you can have an associate's degree in any field of study that's related to business administration, accounting, finance, economics, or real estate. Uh, and we understand that this may be a little confusing, so the AQB has developed guidance to help the states determine whether an applicant has met this requirement if they're going through option two of an associate's, of associate's degree, which we uh, commonly refer to as a focused associate's degree in those topics. The uh, third option is to successfully complete 30 semester hours of college-level courses that cover a minimum of three semester hours in each each uh, class, but they need to have specific topic areas. Uh, we're talking about English composition, micro, macroeconomics, uh, finance, algebra, geometry, higher math, and those that are listed on the screen there you can see, but there are 30 semester hours of very specific topics that, uh, that if you select this option, you will need to to uh, to have a transcript that shows those 30 semester hours each with three minimum of three semester hours each class. The uh, uh, option number four that we have open is to take the CLEP exams. Uh, the CLEP is is short for College Level Examination Program, which been, has been around for a long time uh, and is a very difficult. Uh, examination equivalent to sitting in the class at the university. So uh, you can opt to take all the CLEP exams if you want to. Uh, and so, you know, provided that all the topics are covered, you can go through the CLEP exams. It's a very difficult uh, endeavor if you've ever looked at those exams. Uh, it's certainly an equivalent to sitting in the, the, uh, the courses. The fifth option is to actually combine options three and four. In other words, you can mix and match the uh, actual college 
uh, in classroom, or you can match that with a equivalent uh, CLEP exam, and you can inter intermix those things, assuming all topics are covered uh, in option three. So that's the uh, that's the uh, fifth option, and the sixth option applies only to appraisers who have held the licensed residential credential for a minimum of five years uh, and have no record of any adverse, final, or non-appealable disciplinary action affecting uh, their ability to legally engage in appraisal practice within five years immediately preceding the date of application for the certified residential credential. For those appraisers who meet that specific criteria, uh, they can move to the certified uh, residential level, assuming they meet all the existing requirements for uh, certified residential, and we're talking about qualifying education and experience. So there are a total of six options that are available uh, for the certified residential classification. So, Mark, you, this sixth option, and you referred to it uh, um, very well, the, it, it is what we've come to know as the alternative path towards the certified residential. And some people were confused because of this alternative path, thinking this is all that needed to happen. But as you pointed out, the alternative path is truly only an alternative to the college-level education requirements for certified residential, meaning that the licensed residential appraiser who has met the criteria shown here on the slide is only being exempted from the college-level education. They still have to complete the additional qualifying education, document any additional experience necessary, and also pass the certified residential exam. Is that correct? That's very correct. Great. So let's talk a little bit more about the experience requirements. Um, on, on, the, on this slide, we have a summary of what the current or what the pre-May 1st and post-May May 1st experience requirements are. Mark, can you talk about what the board decided here and, and what was done? Sure. Uh, I could summarize this. Uh, and it's done pretty well on the screen here. But for the licensed residential classification, uh, what the uh, AQB has done is we have lowered the, ex the number of hours of experience for the licensed residential classification from 2,000 hours to 1,000 hours. And that 1,000 hours uh, cannot be accumulated in, in any less than six months. And that is a reduction from pre-2018, which was 12 months. Uh, the May 1st, 2018 criteria is 1,000 hours in six months. Uh, for certified residential, uh, the May 1st, 2018 requirement is 1,500 hours in no fewer than 12 months. Uh, that is a reduction pre-2018 from 24, 24 months and 2,500 hours. Now, in the certified general classification, uh, the consensus of the AQB was that we not reduce the number of hours, but we did find folks that were uh, had completed the hours and just were, were waiting for time to expire. And so we have revised the, the minimum time frame to acquire those 3,000 hours from 30 months to 18 months. And it needs to be pointed out that for certified general, it is still required that 1,500 hours of the experience requirement must be in non-residential appraisal work. So that is our uh, that is our revised experience requirements under the May 1st, 2018 criteria. Great, thanks, Mark. And so the some people have uh, have questioned why the AQB reduced the experience requirements. Can you? provide some additional insight into that? Sure. Uh, the experience requirements haven't changed since January 1st, 1998. Uh, however, since that time, our qualifying education hours have been increased. Uh, the AQB has implemented a required core curriculum that's got specific hours and topics that are required. Uh, 
uh, qualifying education now requires a closed book proctored final exam. Uh, additionally, the AQB has developed a, and it has matured into a robust practice-based national uniform licensing and certification exam that's currently utilized by all jurisdictions. Uh, the exam uh, through its maturity process has become a true gatekeeper based on exam statistics that AQB keeps up with uh, monthly. Additionally, the AQB has implemented a USPAP instructor certification program to ensure quality and consistency of USPAP education. And there's now additional requirements for even supervisory appraisers. So these requirements have all increased and we thought it was a good time to take a look at the experience requirements and make sure it's balanced. So a lot of people talk about um, the AQB criteria as being a three-legged stool, if you will, of education, experience, and examination. And while while the new criteria that goes into effect May 1st, while the experience leg of that stool, if you will, may be a little bit shorter, we're recognizing based on what you're saying that um, that the education has increased and the examinations have increased. So while one leg of the stool might appear a little bit shorter, the others are also longer. So is it safe to say that the AQB believes that the candidates that that satisfy these criteria and get a credential are equally as qualified as those in the past? That is that is true. Uh, the the new uh, the new criteria attempts to balance all those three legs as best as possible. Uh, they'll never be perfectly balanced, uh, but we have made an attempt and, and done our research and really looked at this and tried to balance those three legs of the stool between uh, education, examination, and experience. Great. And part of what we're trying to do is to assist in the implementation of this criteria and in doing so, uh, the board has been working hard to develop guidance uh, in the form of a new guide note, which is guide note 10, and some implementation Q&As. Um, and related to what we were just talking about with the uh, differences in the qualifications, yet a similar level of uh, a caliber of qualified individual, the AQB is aware that reciprocity is a concern with these new requirements. Does the AQB consider that, that, that the new criteria as of May 1st is equal or equivalent to the pre-May 2018 criteria? Uh, yes, John. And in fact, this question is, is one of our new Q&As that the a AQB has developed. Uh, over the years, the criteria has changed many times. Uh, it's the position of the AQB that a credential obtained under one version of the criteria is equal to one obtained under a different criteria. Uh, from the AQB's perspective, an individual holding a certain credential is equally qualified to another holding the same credential regardless of when that credential was issued and under which version of the criteria that applied at that time. Uh, therefore, the AQB is strongly encouraging the states and jurisdictions to view all credentials issued for a certain classification as being equal. Well, that's great clarification, Mark. And, and tell me, what else is the board doing to help states with the implementation? Sure. Uh, AQB is holding uh, a public meeting in Seattle, Washington on Friday, May the 4th from, noon, uh, from 9 till noon Pacific time. And uh, we encourage you, if you can make that meeting, great. We'd love to see you in Seattle. But uh, if you're unable to make it to Seattle, uh, the meeting will be live streamed for those who cannot attend uh, in person. Uh, so, you know, you can join us online. Additionally, the AQB will be available at the, uh, at the May Arrow Conference, which follows the, the Seattle meeting. Uh, and we'll hold sessions with the regulators on Saturday morning to address questions about the new criteria and answer as many as we can. 
Uh, also, as, as referenced earlier, the AQB has developed a new guide note. It's guide note 10. And that guide note helps states determine if courses are taken by an applicant for the, uh, particularly the certified residential criteria credential, uh, cover the appropriate topics that we discussed. Uh, additionally, there'll be a new criteria booklet as well as separate Q&As that'll be downloadable from the foundation's website. And the AQB has also developed a student tracking sheet to help applicants uh, determine if they have met these qualifications. Uh, lastly, AQB is uh, available for speaking engagements. If someone is interested in having a board member come to your state and speak on the changes or any other foundation matter for that uh, perspective, a fillable uh, speaker request form is available on the foundation's website. So uh, we are doing everything we can to, to get the word out and make sure that we have a consistent message uh, about the new criteria. So it's, it's clear that the AQB uh, is considering uh, partnering with the states to make this a successful implementation uh, just based on, on the things that, uh, that Mark just discussed. And uh, for those that may not be aware, ARO is the Association of Appraiser Regulatory Officials. So it is an association of the state boards across the country. So with that, Mark, what's next for the board? Well, uh, as some of you may recall, uh, the board has discussed uh, in a concept that we're calling practical applications of real estate appraisal. And of course, we always have to have a acronym for things, and this one we call PERIA uh, for short. But uh, the concept is currently under development and the board is studying the issue, and we're we're eager to move forward with it. Uh, we're not wanting to get ahead of, of ourselves, but we're really wanting to study it hard. But uh, this is a very new concept uh, that would enable an applicant to obtain experience in a structured, yet not the traditional supervisory trainee model that we have in place, uh, utilizing, you know, maybe uh, virtual reality or some other emerging technology, but the end result would produce uh, USPAP compliant appraisals. Uh, our concept is is that an applicant may be able to receive some, some but not all of the required experience hours in this non-traditional methodology. But again, we're talking about uh, equivalent experience to the model that we have today, but in a non-traditional format that may actually provide a, a more controlled setting and actually, in some cases, maybe even better supervision uh, of a trainee. And Mark, that's that's a that's a real important distinction, and and the board should be applauded for its work in uh, in examining this. You know, a lot of you know airline pilots get the majority of their experience at a simulator. The medical profession now has a lot of simulated training. Um, this is, in fact, the technology that exists today has, as you said, created an opportunity for possibly superior training over what an individual might get, you know, once they find a suitable supervisor and are then able to work in one, one market with a specific type of housing product and market condition. It's, it's really, as far as the, uh, the mind can imagine, what could be done in a simulated training where there could be changes in the marketplace with a push of a button, changes in the property type with a push of a button, changes in external influence. So, you know, obviously the devil is in the details um, for Perea, but uh, as you said, the board is taking a deliberate and very comprehensive approach to looking at this. But if done right, this could be a real game changer uh, for the profession in the long term. Wouldn't you agree? Uh, I agree. And we have, we've heard and we've all experienced uh, hearing about inconsistent supervision of trainees. And this, the concept here is we may actually have a, have a program uh, where we can actually get consistent uh, training of trainees coming through the system 
uh, and we may actually get a better appraiser at the end. So, uh, but here again, this is a concept. It's new. It's uh, it can be revolutionary uh, if it's implemented. But uh, we certainly want to study it and get it vetted really well before we uh, we even uh, put it on the street. And so, uh, but it is one that the AQB is looking very hard at and studying intently. Great, great. Well, thank you, Mark. Um, earlier, I bypassed uh, this slide, which is the contact information for Magdalene Vasquez, who is the program manager for the Qualifications Board. If you have questions regarding the implementation of the criteria, uh, please feel free to contact Magdalene at your convenience. We also have our general contact information for the foundation that appears here on the screen. Um, with that, Mark, I'd like to thank you so much for your time uh, in providing the information and thank everyone for attending. Mark, any final words from you? No, we hope to see you in uh, Seattle, or if not, we hope to uh, you'll join us online. Great. Well, again, thank you, everyone, and uh, we look forward to seeing you soon.